to make the plastic eat a fungi happen? Yeah. It's a tough question. Like, of course, they're gonna find the solution to plastic. But if there's already all over the world, the species like popping up that are able to break down this complex molecular structure of plastics, we know it can slowly survive on this plastic and slowly eats the plastic. I don't know if anybody has fully grasped how. Uh, so, my name is Jasper Degenaars. Uh, Jasper, I think is what most people know me by because that's the Anglo-Saxon version of saying my name. I don't know if there's an Anglo-Saxon version of saying my sure name. How would I describe my relationship with mushrooms? I guess like I am karmically entangled with fungi. There's never anything that I learn about them that doesn't fascinate me. I see fungi and especially mushrooms as the alchemists of the natural world and they're really good at creating these really complex uh, molecules that you don't really find anywhere else in nature. It's ridiculous, like how much we don't know about the queendom or kingdom of fungi. All right, our fancy Guatemalan laboratory. This is one of the mushrooms that we know breaks down some of the plastics. It's uh, the split gill, also known as schizophallum commune. Like, it's a very common mushroom. Like, you see it all over the world. So these ones that like has shown to like really slowly break down plastics. The, the more famous one right now is Pestalotiopsis microsporae. There's a lot of them. We've never found a plant in the wild that does not contain any of these endophytic fungi. All mushrooms are fungi, but not all fungi produce mushrooms. So it's only a very small group of fungi that produce these mushrooms, which are known as, the, this group is known as Dicaria, and they're almost all saprophytic, so that means they eat the dead shit. So that's the main functional aspect of mushrooms in the ecosystem, is they recycle dead matter that is complex into something that's more easily digestible, for example, plants. To my understanding, Pestilithiopsis microspora, it's a fucking mouthful, I know, uh, does not produce mushrooms. So it's an endophytic fungi, which means endo within, phytic, plant-related, lives inside the cell walls of plants. It was found in the Amazon, I think in 2008, and was found to solely survive on polyurethane plastic, which is a very really complex molecular plastic structure, right? It's very promising that like more or less 100 years after humans starting to actually produce excess amount of plastics, already an organism evolved to break down these really complex structures. And you can just order them online and grow them on your agar petri dishes. So here we have a liquid culture of this plastic eating. Well, they call it the mushroom. This is how little we know about it, because if you go to the Wikipedia page, it says it's endophytic, but endophytes don't really produce mushrooms. So what is it? So here we see it a little bit more clear, right? There's all of these little frazzles. So this, this is a starting point, and then you can inoculate, and inoculate is a fancy word for introducing, on like an, a petri dish, you have to do a sterile transfer. That's the shot. Make sure that the mycelium is nice and broken up. Now very carefully, I'm gonna just inoculate, introduce, bigger drop, and drop here. Now we wrap this up and put it in the incubation, and it will grow into something like this. But you can add any nutrients that you want to it. So you can add ground up plastic, add it to your agar, pressure cook it, and then introduce this culture. And you're kind of training this fungus to get really good at consuming plastic. And you see the white fluff? Mm -hmm. That's a little baby fungus finding first life. Like a lot of people don't know that like wood used to be the plastic of the natural world. It took fungi approximately 30 million years to figure out how to completely break down lignin in trees, which is a really complex carbon structure present in wood, right? Fungi have already solved this issue. So they already found that solution in the natural world. Like, of course, they're gonna find the solution to plastic because plastic, although we might say it's unnatural, but it's just complex carbon structures, right? There's nothing unnatural about that. It's just that it's artificially made by humans and then evolved, like Pastelitopsis microsporae. Then you also have like Schizophyllum commune, the split gill, which is a very common mushroom, is also indicated to be able to completely survive on plastics. And there's several more. If there's already all over the world a species like popping up that are able to break down this like complex molecular structure of plastics, it's gonna keep happening. So here we go into our green room. So here we have more incubation. So here the bags get ready. And 
still is completely colonized. So here you see a reishi culture eating a bunch of these wood chips. So when this is completely colonized, completely eaten, we move it to the fruiting room where today's harvest already has been done. So not many mushrooms, but we have a bunch of reishi because they grow a lot slower. This Pestilitopsis, it doesn't want to eat plastic. It will only eat it in like a last case scenario, right? So if you're like, have like inoculate your compost heap with this B microsporae, like it's gonna eat everything else first before it starts eating the plastic, right? So you have to have very controlled environments to let this fungus like loose upon. I think it's not applicable yet because otherwise everybody is doing this right now. I think it needs more time, but it's promising. We know it can solely survive on this plastic and slowly eats the plastic it doesn't reduce the plastic in less than 10 15 years so like even if you start doing this right you're gonna have a massive mountain of plastic that is very 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 slowly over maybe eons being digested by this plastic uh eating fungus like p marcus Borei. i don't know if anybody has fully grasped how this is happening because i think if we know how we can emulate it and we can find like we can imitate it in like a natural system. Biomimicry is like a really classic thing that we're doing everywhere. Well, fungi, they, they kind of just release all their digestive enzymes outside their body and then they sit in it. And then they break it down to such a level with these basically really crazy biochemical compounds that they produce that they are like can seem to break this polyurethane in something that then becomes water soluble. And then when it's water soluble, Plants can consume it, fungi can consume it, we humans could be able to consume it. So yeah, I think this fungus, by figuring out how to produce plastic, it's a catalyst, right? There's more and more fun, different fungi that are very similar like it, that can also create these, like, these alkaloids, these components, then to break down these plastics. In an ideal world in the future, we have these garbage dumps that like separate all of the waste, or and like hopefully plastic will also be compostable but just like needs to have this little hand of like any of these mushrooms i think there's five or six that like are able to solely survive on plastics and we just have to understand that not everything moves as fast as we like it to move. and we can help it that's a cool thing if we put funding to this and people we put like a lot of talented scientists on this i'm sure we can find a solution to this you can buy the pestilitopsis microsporic culture online and like you can experiment that's the cool thing about mycology like there's so many breakthroughs that we're not even aware of that can happen like that you know and we just have more people playing around and propagating cultures and seeing what happens you know experimenting go come up with some ideas even if there's 10 people that like we'll see it and they're like oh my god this is like i'm gonna grow this Pestilitiopsis micro. I'm gonna first learn how to pronounce Pestilitiopsis <laughs> microspora, and then I'm gonna learn how to cultivate it and propagate it. Like, that'd be 10 more people. That's like probably already like doubling the amount of people that are working on this right now. <laughs>